Hey guys, Straw one here, and today, well, we are going to be looking at something very special that I own, and it's older than me, older than a lot of people, actually, um, it's, for all you guys who are really into video games, it's the same age as the original Game Boy. You still don't know what it is, I know. So... Also, just one more quick mention, I'm going to try to do weekly videos from now on, because, and I haven't been making enough videos. So, without further ado, further ado, what are we taking a look at? Well, it involves styrofoam and a box that this all came in. This is my, if I set that off to the side. My 1983 Commodore 64 in the box. So, I got this and everything else you're going to see in this video for 100% free. No charge. Like, seriously. So, that is really good. That, that is a really good deal, as these things are worth a thousand dollars with the box. And I'm sure I could have probably around three thousand, I'm pretty sure I would be three thousand dollars richer if I sold all the stuff I'm going to show you. It is not for sale. This was my great uncle's and he passed away in November. So, not for sale. So... Um, this is my Commodore 64 in this box, but before we look at the Commodore itself, I'm going to slide this back out of the way. You can still see it, though. We are going to be taking a look at, at um, a look at some documentation from the 80s. So, we got all this documentation, and... This isn't even all of it. I have a Commodore, or a subs I have a thing for a mail order form, that's what it's called, for or a, ordering a, a subscription to Commodore or a, uh, magazines, and I still have that. Wasn't filled out, unfortunately. I do not have it with me right now. I use it as a bookmark. Don't ask why. So, the first thing we have here is jump word listing stuff by prodigy so um it just has a bunch of commands and there's nothing really in this and uh one quick mention i should say is um i don't have really any floppy disks for this i mean i'm sure i have some but I don't have many. I have a ton of five and a quarter inch discs, but um, none that I'm pretty sure will actually work on uh, the original Commodore 64. Unless Flight Sim can work on the Commodore 64. So then we got Spinnaker. Because they were trying to sell because it's easier than the easy working rider. And we've got a uh, loading instruction. Oh, I do have one of these for Easy Script down here. Again, it's being used as a bookmark. So we just got this. If you want to know how to uh, load it on to your Commodore 64, just read this right now. Pause it. And then we got some screenshots and. Just a bunch of words I'm not going to read. You can read them if you want to. Although, spelling check. Spelling corrector. So high tech and fancy. I'm assuming it was for 1983. Oh. Oh, wait, no. I, I don't, I'm not using it as a bookmark. Never mind. This is my uh, easy working stuff. You can see where it was folded when I was using it as a bookmark. So, again, you can read this if you want. Um, we've got 
super software for your Commodore 64, and then you got this just huge fold-out thing of just all these things, and then Computer Club, and then you can send it in, and more, more stuff. So, it's just so much stuff. So, folding this back up, if I can figure out how this folds. Oh, no, oh, wait, no, that's not right. Oh, I always have trouble folding these things back up. Oh, wait, I got it, I got it. There, there. Just like that. And then, important! Uh, by uh, the registration stuff. That is really, really awesome. Because this is the registration, I believe. So, yeah. And then we got this huge book for Easy Script. And it's just... It's a lot of pages. But it does have some nice graphics on it. I do like those graphics. So, uh, yeah, so, now we are gonna actually, if I move this stuff out of the way, we're going to take a look at the actual Commodore War 64. So, opening this up, we have, oh, you can't see that. We have all this serial number down here, serial number sticker. I have made sure this does match. It is a matching set. So, this is the personal computer with professional power. And of course, new from Commodore, advanced color graphics, professional sounded music, 64 kilobits memory, the yeah, plus so CP slash M, I don't know what that stands for, option for your business, education, and personal use. And then opening it up, but when you first open it up, I'm going to tip it back. It says, welcome to the world, or, oh, you can't see world. Welcome to the world of friendly computing. So putting it down again and flipping it up, you can see the Commodore 64. And now you can see why I did not have the uh, styrofoam protecting this thing. It's because of this big, bulky plastic cover thing. Which, um, I'm pretty sure Computer Mate put it on, judging by the gigantic Computer Mate sticker on the front. Um, but yeah, this thing is in beautiful, beautiful condition. Um, it works, even. I've had this connected up to the TV, and it works. So, yeah, you can see all the stuff down there on the bottom, and you've already seen that side. Nothing on this side. So, yes. And, uh, the fun thing is, this thing looks beautiful. I'm not sure how it looks so beautiful, because when I got it, it had been sitting on top of this box, not even inside of the box, for, I believe, approximately 25 years. Maybe 30. So, pulling this back, and opening up this little cubby hole, we've got your, uh... TV connector thing, which I'm not going to be using because I have RF cables and I have a TV that supports RF, so I don't need that. I'm just going to keep it around. And then we have a aftermarket power supply because the original one is dead and I just threw it away because I didn't need it, I didn't want it, and... Um, it was delivering a bad voltage. So I got this replacement one. Yeah, you can see all the stuff on the bottom there about it. Um, but yeah. So it connects through. Um, 
the, the normal wall and then goes into the funky Commodore, uh, Commodore focus, okay, uh, the Commodore power thing. So, that is what is in the Commodore 64 box. So, I guess now we can, uh, move this out of the way and move on to my other items. <clears throat> okay, so, the next thing we have here is in this box. So, I scribbled out the guy's name and address. <coughs> and, um, I don't know what these numbers mean at all. But, so, what is this? Well, this is the... Super Disk Floppy Disk Drive 4 Commodore Computers. And it interfaces with Commodore computers, serial and IEEE -E -E bus ports, 16 kilobits ROM based operating system. I don't know why a disk drive needs an operating system, but sure, sure. Um, power on self test diagnostics. That is actually pretty good, I'm pretty sure. And then, 8 kilobit RAM area, 175k capacity. And there are those numbers again. So this is the MSD Super Disk Drive for uh, com uh, Commodore computers. So, um, before we go ahead and take a look at the other sides of the box... I just want to take it out of the box. So, opening it up, you can see it way down in there. So, we're just gonna flip it onto its side and. Oh, that was an awful noise. And lift this up and. Oop. Go out of the way. And that's upside down now. Okay, so, taking the foam off, um, again, foam, oh, nearly dropped it, um, so, this is the top of it, it's beige, uh, this is the front, and, oh, I have a floppy disk in it, uh, fast back in solitaire. Okay, um, I forgot I had that in there, but this is actually, you know, one of the, I'm pretty sure this is a slightly rare model, as it, it's only the single disk drive version, it's not the double, and I've been looking online, all the ones I can find are single versions, and, ugh, there's cat hair all over it, so on the bottom, it has this little sticker, which is upside down, um, I'm not gonna fix that. These feet, I'm pretty sure, are supposed to be on here. Um, on the... Oh. Oops. Hmm. Okay, well, I... Hmm. On the back here, um, is just the power switch, a fuse, and some other stuff. Yeah, this is falling out. Um, I... I will admit... This is not the first time I've done this video. This I'm. This is actually try number two. First time the video files got corrupted. And uh, in the original video, I opened this up to make sure there were no blown capacitors. And I did see I didn't to put in a few screws. And I was like, oh, where do these go? I don't care. And I just, just threw them on my floor. Well, turns out they hold in the floppy disk drive. But, oh well. And then the sides are very plain, so we don't need to look at the sides. So, that is the disc reader, and ew, my table's a mess. And then the other sides of the box are just, that's the side we've already seen. This side just says Microsystems Development, Super Disk. On the bottom here, it's uh, pretty... Boring stuff. Date there. 10-14-83. Uh, uh, same stuff on that side. And same as on this side on this side. But, that, I, 
I prefer this shade of blue to uh, this this shade of more gray blue. So that is the floppy disk reader. Not a lot for that at all. Um, so uh, I guess next would be the printer. Okay, so the last thing we are going to be taking a look at in this video is my Star SG-10C yeah. printer. It doesn't say printer anywhere on the top here. Um, but yeah, still has the little plastic handle on the box. And uh, so before I take it out, let's just look at the box because I trust this thing in here. So, on this side, it says, handle with care, 100% Commodore compatible printer. I really hope it is, because you're buying it for a Commodore computer. And then, complete, nothing else to buy. High speed, 120 CPS, and high quality printing. Fast draft mode and near letter quality mode selectable, compact, and easy to use. Now, this is where I have slight problems, because if I can just kind of block the glare from my light, you can see over here, we got an image, and it looks like this girl, oh, this girl is helping her father print something onto their printer, and she's like, oh yeah, dad, it's easy. And he's looking like he's just like, what's going on here? So, it, easy to use. I don't agree with that. And then, compact. I am a collector of vintage electronics and modern electronics. I have electric typewriters. Or, A, electric typewriter. So, let's just compare the size. There's about an... There's about this much, uh, this much space before the printer actually starts of just styrofoam. Gotta raise my camera up. Ah, you can see my camera stand. Um, yeah, it's, it's the, it's bigger than an electric typewriter. Got a bit of dust in there. So, uh, star, it's not compact, printer cable included. I don't have the printer cable in this box, I, I took it out when I first unboxed this, when I first got it back in July of 2022. And then, star technology backed by 35 years of experience. I, I don't know what computers they've been making printers for for 35 years in 1983. Because they would have been making printers for 60 years before computers. So, that's that side. And then, flipping it over to this side, it is a little hard to see. Uh, just says star up there. And then, same thing we read. And then... On the back here, I really like this because it tells you how to use the printer. And so, you got your insert the ribbon thing. And one thing I really love about this printer, it uses the same exact ribbon as that, uh, that typewriter I was comparing the size to. The same ribbon. So, insert the ribbon, and you have the little diagram of inserting the ribbon, I guess. And then, be sure the printer power switch is off. And plug the power cord in an outlet, and then connect the printer to the computer with the included cable. So, there, you got it connecting and plugging in, and the switch is off. And then, set le lever forward for tractor feed. Or back for friction feed. I, I don't know what that means. Oh, you can't even see that, really. I don't know what that means. I'm not a printer guy. And then insert paper. And then put the power on. And then four. Push NLQ button on front panel. Again, 
I don't know printers. What does NLQ stand for? I don't know. And then five. When the computer instructs the printer to print, it will start. And then you got something that's really nice font that's just printing starts, starts. And, you know, you got all these stars flying everywhere and it's so amazing. Because, you know, printing, printing is so amazing. And then... The other side, the sides are both exactly the same. So, um, this doesn't fit in the space I have for camera stand. So, I'm just gonna open it up like this. Well, I guess I can stand it up. Oh, 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 okay. Come on, stand up. There we go. So, we got... An instruction manual user's manual so you know it just tells you how to uh, use the printer and it's got all these diagrams and character style stuff and again star that's who created this printed in Japan that's interesting in 1985 apparently And then down here, we got some random pieces of metal. I don't know what these are for. I would probably know if I read the instructions. But I don't know. I, I don't have any use for this. And this is just going back in this box when I'm done with it. I mean, I'll pull it out and I'll use it every once in a while. And then we got a uh, screw and a... Uh, wire loom in here this came with this i don't know why i don't know what it's for but came with it and then setting the box on its side so i can just drag it out come on out there we go and then pulling this out We got a big empty box now that I can just put on the floor. And here's the printer. So, taking the styrofoam off. Well, first we gotta unwrap the power cord. So, just set that over to the side. Pulling this foam off. And then uh, pulling this foam off. Oh, 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 there. And so we got the printer, and this just pops off, and that's where you put the ribbon, I think. And, or maybe it goes there, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a printer guy. And then on this side, we got the on-off switch. We got wh whatever this dial does. We got these buttons here, which look like they would be those weird, like, mushy terrible awful feeling buttons on some things but no they actually are really nice to push i mean it's not like a membrane keyboard where it's just a satisfying clunk but it's like a more modern keyboard so on the back here is where this all plugs in and this little panel which is for i don't know what and then over on this side we got a hole with a bunch of switches and I'm gonna leave all those where they were because I don't know what any of those do we got the front and I really really love this sticker I don't know why but it it's just such a nice sticker and then on the bottom nothing real interesting so that is my 1983 Commodore 64 floppy disk reader, printer, and documentation. All in its box with the styrofoam. And, oh, just one thing I forgot to mention. This printer came with the plastic that surrounded it at the factory. I did not have that on there, 
because my cat got at it. So I, it got all torn up, and I'm really disappointed about that. But, ugh, my cat. So, that is the end of this video. Um, I will have this all set up for you guys to see everything in its entirety on my table. So, enjoy this. Ooh, ooh look at it all. I just now realized you can't see the Commodore 64 box. It's back there. Oh, just so wonderful. All this free stuff. Oh!